Hello and welcome to the Dell EMC PowerStore video series. In this video we will be showing how administrators and developers can learn about REST API implementation and leverage REST API in Python to automate tasks around PowerStore arrays. This slide gives a short overview of what we try to cover in that video. It will start with an introduction to PowerStore REST API implementation, how data is exchanged and shows selecting and filter specific objects. The first part ends with a collection of useful information using REST API and online resources for reference. The demonstration is split into two additional parts. In part 2 we will show discovering REST API using built-in Swagger UI. Swagger UI is available on all PowerStore cluster installations and gives a good starting point to learn more about how REST API can be used. Part 3 show how to use REST API in own Python scripts and how Python library can simplify daily operations. Even demonstrations only shows example in curl and python, REST can be accessed similarly from other shell commands and languages just as easily. REST API stands for a representational state transfer application programming interface and allows you to interact with all PowerStore management functionality. It is very easy to adopt because it is using standard HTTP calls and brings a well-defined API. It's also very popular when talking about automation of processes using own scripts or various available third-party tools. Some examples for REST API can be used are system settings and monitoring, for instance, check or change cluster name or fetching alerts and metrics from a cluster. For host connections, we can use the REST API to configure host fiber channel, WWNs, or iSCSI initiators, or mapping volumes to hosts. Network settings, including NTP and DNS server settings. Probably most used storage management capabilities to configure volumes and the volume groups. We can use REST API as well to configure local and remote data protection features like snapshots, synth clones, and remote replication. And as last example, it's possible to configure support settings like SSH access and support assist for remote health and cloud IQ connectivity. As you can see, PowerStore REST API presents a single consistent interface to manage a PowerStore cluster and automate processes. Finally, SSL encryption allows secure communication between client and PowerStore cluster. REST API uses standard HTTP requests against the PowerStore management web interface. As a connection is SSL encrypted to protect the data you including username and password, HTTPS is used. The base URL for REST API is very similar to the URL for PowerStore Manager. HTTPS colon double slash PowerStore cluster IP or FQDN slash API slash REST. Depending if we want to address a collection resource or object, either just the resource type like volume or host is appended or collection resources plus instance ID will be used. The instance ID is a unique ID across the cluster and could be just N1 for node A in collection resource node or a multiple block 36 digit hex string for volume instance ID. When actions should be performed like ping or verify, the action like ping, verify or clone follow the resource group for object ID after a slash. When using third party tools or SDK implementations, the REST API description is available at the shown URL. As it is probably hard for users to read, a more convenient way is implemented to explore REST API. Swaggy UI. It utilizes the API description and presents an interactive web UI with possibility to run individual REST API operations against the system. We will show that later during first part of the demonstration. To protect REST API and Swagger UI from unauthorized access, it uses HTTP basic authentication. When Swagger UI is used in a tab in the same browser parallel to PowerStore Manager, no further authentication is required. For scripting, cookie-based authentication can be used after an initial basic authentication, where the authentication cookie can be found in the response header. While web browser use get HTTP operations to read content from a web server, for REST, we need to use other operations to create, modify or delete objects. For that, the HTTP operations POST to create new object or execute actions, PATCH for modification of an existing object and DELETE to delete an existing object are supported. For security reason, a cross-site reference forgery token is required to execute set operations POST, PATCH and DELETE. As we will see in the demonstration, the requests and responses for REST API are also using HTTP headers. 
Beside usual headers, like content type for JSON, the CSRF token, Dell EMC token, is in every response header of a GET request. While the last slide showed how to access REST API and how to address resources, the slide speaks about request and the response body, the content of HTTP requests and responses. PowerStore uses JSON format, which is easy for us to read and easy for computers to parse. It's based on attribute value pairs as following example shows. Imagine, we have a volume, it can be described with several attributes, like instance ID, a name, description, and the size of the volume. Using that example, a JSON object is just as easy as adding some curly brackets, putting quotes around strings and divide lines by comma. That's a valid JSON example as we get from the system. Now we know the basics to use PowerStore's REST API, the URL and exchange format. This slide shows selecting the right attributes and use server-based filtering to limit the number of responses and load on REST server and REST client. As we will see in Swaggy UI, PowerStore just shows the object ID attribute in queries when not selecting attributes explicitly. In own scripts, we may want to get also the given name and size of a volume as the example shows. For that, we are using the SELECT statement with attributes you want. SELECT equal, name, comma, size. Even it's not possible in Swaggy UI, the REST API implementation supports server-based filtering. The example shows how to filter for volume beginning with demo volume and a size of greater than 10 GB. Please be in mind, we are working with a multiple of a kibibyte. Both a select for multiple attributes and a filter like shown can be combined in one request divided with an ampersand. For more detailed information, please check PowerStore REST API developer's guide. In HTTP, every server response also reports a status or return code. This slide shows an overview of most seen codes. The 200 area always means that the request was successful. 201, for instance, is used when a new resource is created successfully and system responds with a new instance ID. 204 is also a successful completion, but without body content is used for delete operation, for example. Codes in 400 and 500 area meaning a failed operation. For example, 401 or 403 if there is an issue with authentication or 404 when a requested resource does not exist. If you need more information, please refer to the PowerStore REST API developer's guide. If it is planned to use any other third-party tool for management, I would like to show you some common information which might be useful as reference. The request URL for REST API HTTPS colon double slash PowerStore cluster IP or hostname slash API slash REST. An API description is available with the request URL plus slash openapi.json. Basic authentication or cookie-based authentication is required. For post, patch and delete operations, it's required to request the CSRF token with an authenticated GET request. The last slide shows useful resources for using the PowerStore REST API. First, the PowerStore REST API developer's guide on dell.com slash PowerStore docs. Additional online resources for developers on developer.dellemc.com. And finally, the public code repositories available on github.com slash dell. This ends the first part, which covers the REST API overview. Continue with part 2 for REST API Swagger UI demo.